Hi Jim, I have five questions for you. Okay. I will um, like to focus more on what you say than on the questions, so I haven't uh, learned them by heart. And no, I will problem. Read them. Okay. no problem. Do you think that management and leadership best practice best practices in the United States also apply in Romania? I think fundamentally they do. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Even though we have fundamentally different cultures, the fundamentals still will work. Uh, so, for instance, because we are uh, relying a lot on interpersonal skills, Romanians build great relationships. Actually, I think they focus uh, far better on relationships than Americans. Europeans in general do. Asians even do better. You know, they, I, you can meet with somebody and build a relationship for two days in Japan or in China before starting uh, to talk business. Uh, here, I think that the focus is on uh, relationships. So, for instance, the tool reads, R-E-A-D-S, 50% of our uh, problems in the workplace are relationship problems here as well. 30% are, are on expectation problems or challenges, along with assumptions if we, if we don't uh, clarify our expectations and we start to rely on assumptions. And then, as you know, we commit suicide. This will ruin plans and ruin relationships and, of course, ruin communication. Uh, everybody, no matter where we are, has to have a destination, destination an objective, uh, an end product. So we have to focus on the destination, no matter where we are. Uh, and the S in READS, yes. the READS model, yes. uh, self-awareness or feedback, we cannot course correct unless we have feedback. Even a, a guided missile can't course correct unless it bounces information off the satellite and then off the target and back and then the satellite course corrects. Same with us as humans. So just taking that one model into consideration, we're all basically human beings and management and leadership deal with the human side of business. What would you change in the formal education system? Just having finished another master's program myself, I would change the level of participation of students. The more the student teaches and speaks, the more they learn. Teaching is the best way to learn. So I think in more participation, more role plays where the student is teaching another student, and then having the teacher give feedback on that process is probably going to be essential. So it used to be MBA programs were theoretical, case-based, and now uh, programs around the world really are sending MBA students into uh, corporations uh, and they solve real problems together as teams and bring real solutions to management of different corporations and this I think is the best education. Okay. Yes. Um, what feedback is the most valuable? I think balanced feedback is most important. Uh, and I have, from my experience, developed the simplest form of feedback, appreciate and improve. We all need to know what is appreciated by our style of interacting with our uh, direct reports, our peers, our boss. We also have to know what needs to be done better and what needs to be improved alongside of each other. Not sandwiched, okay. but alongside of each other. I don't like the sandwich technique, but I like either both together or each separately. Uh, so you could have a, a session with somebody, look, I just want to give you a 
appreciative feedback. Or I just want to give you some feedback that could, I believe, help you improve. Is this the right time to do that? Some people are ready at this point in time or, <coughs> or <coughs> right at this moment. Maybe you're feeling tired or overworked from the day. What did you do to have the presentation skills you have today? Repetition, 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 repetition. And using life, real life experience and my, what they call in our business, signature stories. Other people really can't tell that story because they haven't gone through it. So, you know the story I tell about uh, going on Tarim Airlines first, and uh, I didn't know that they still had smoking. Yes, I know. That. And uh, yeah, this. Uh, so, so I, uh, the flight attendant asked me, uh, should I tell people not to smoke in business class? What did you tell? What were they told before they got on? They can smoke. I said, but you'll die if you tell them not to smoke. So I'll handle it. I'll just have to handle it. It's my fault for not checking. I didn't know. Forty-five minutes later, she comes. Come with me. And I thought she was going to ask me to step outside. <laughs> and she didn't ask me to step outside. She had me go into the cockpit because she said, you treated me so nicely. You didn't ask me to do something that I didn't want to do, and that's ask people to stop smoking. So I asked the pilots, and they said, bring him up here. Well... Not only was it a pleasure to fly across the Atlantic and over the North Pole in the cockpit, but I got to see the Aurora Borealis. And it taught me a lesson when something is going not the way I would like it to go, and it's not in my control. If I adapt to it, something better will happen than I could have ever imagined. Really a lesson to me. So I will use that that story, my own experience, to teach that lesson better than if I just told somebody, look, you have to adapt to things you're not in control of. No, I have that experience, I have that story, and I've told that story hundreds of times because education is also wrapped in a, in a story, cloaked in a story that people can remember. And if they remember that story, they're going to remember this point, this teaching point. Your story is very inspiring to me. And uh, I have a last question. Okay. In 1989, Romanians got out of communism. Uh, 20 years from that moment, we're still in transition. Uh, all the revolution happened uh, and it, on television. It was all tele televised. If you could have sent a message to the Romanians in December 1989, what would that message be? You know... That's a great question because I've been thinking about this, watching the, they call it the Middle East Spring or something like yeah, that, yeah. with all of the countries doing the same thing. We're tired of dictatorship. We want to think for ourselves. We want to do for ourselves. And what I would have told the Romanians is what I would tell uh, the people who are experiencing what you experienced in 89. Take it easy, take your time, don't try to change too fast, because this transition will take 20, 30, 35 years, and slowly you will improve, not quickly. Don't expect, boy, freedom is bringing me wealth. And, no, it's going to bring you responsibility. It's going to bring you more uh, opportunities to be creative and change things uh, personally and uh, governmentally and professionally. Uh, don't be in a hurry to move from one way of living to another way of living. Take it slow. Be easy with yourself. And don't become impatient with yourself. Because as an outsider, I see what you've done in 20 years and I'm impressed. When a Romanian sees it, they're impatient, they want to go faster, they're not pleased with themselves. For me, you've grown a huge amount, just in the 12 years 
I, I've been coming to Romania. So I think the best advice is take it easy and maintain your self-esteem. Look for small successes. Don't wait for perfection. Phrase progress as it is going. And you've really progressed. Even physically, Bucharest is completely different than 12 years ago. Roads are better. Packs of dogs are gone. Uh, people are smiling more on the streets. Uh, I think there's a, there's a good energy in the air, even though the energy in the whole world right now uh, is suppressed because of the crisis, the economic crisis. You're used to crisis, crises. And I think you'll go through it better than some Americans. Americans are not used to this type of crisis. We're having to change our lifestyle. If you're used to going through crises, I think you're going to come out uh, much better than probably we come out. Thank you so much, Jim. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. My, my pleasure. My pleasure. And I'm glad this time you're on camera with me. <laughs> my friends in the U.S. ask me, how come he's not in the camera? Now he's in the camera. Mm -hmm. My friend, I love you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay. Whoops.